right, this is going to be my um, quick oscilloscope uh, primer. I'm going to go over the basics. Uh, this is $100, basically a $100 scope. You can get some added features, but pretty much the $100 one is going to be all you need. Uh, you can see uh, this is the one that I have. That I, well, I own both of them, but um, this one I've been using for quite a few years. I really like it. Obviously, uh, a lot of added features on here. Um, bigger screen, clearly. The both of them have uh, two uh, two inputs here. This one does have a, uh, a reference waveform of one kilohertz. Um, but and uh, this guy right here, actually, you can buy a feature. It's a uh, the generator output so, so for plant repair you can use it let's say if you want to trigger uh, an inverter to, to operate uh, three-phase inverter or something like that but overall it's really not all that useful in the field uh, and that's really what we're going to concentrate on this guy right here is my um, lab oscilloscope and uh, i love this guy but you can't really use a lab oscilloscope like this in the field when it's really big, bulky, heavy. You don't want to carry this thing around in your van. Um, you know, it can get damaged there, you know, so it's, uh, it also, uh, uh, you have to also have uh, an isolation transformer like that one or like this one. So I have two. This is an actual auto transformer, so I can't use that. But basically it isolates anything you're testing um, and it protects the scope and protects the equipment you're working on. So uh, really for this video we're going to be focusing on um, these guys right here. The nice thing about the small one is it is small. It, the, the case, which is this guy right here, we'll open it up, see some of the stuff you get in there. There you go, it's a nice little pocket. It's, it's a semi-hard, semi-rigid case. Uh, feels pretty sturdy, uh, as opposed to it is a softer case. So, so there we go. Uh, but you have more pockets. Um, I don't know. Both are both are good. I probably I like the hard case uh, for the small one better. Um, it's not too big of a deal. Um, also, when you're using this. You, d you don't want to, to to plug it in, right? So you don't when you charge it, you don't want to uh, use it. Turn it off, and the charging port's in there. So that's that's basically it charging right now. And you want to you can charge it overnight, and that's fine. But when you're using it, you have to use it with it unplugged from the power um, it basically isolates the scope from the equipment you're working on so it protects the scope protects your equipment um, so that's a very important thing to remember when you're using uh, the scopes i'm going to go ahead and show you the features uh, of this oscilloscope because it's uh, it's cheaper and it'll do the job. I'll show you how to how to use it. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, show you how to connect the uh, oscilloscope. Uh, what you're going to need really is this guy right here. The ground has the little nub sticking out here. I did find that these are recessed, so if you have kind of bigger fingers, this is a kind of a, a chore to get in there and, and, and twist it. But that BNC connector needs a twist on there. So we have ground over here. You can use standard meter leads and it does come with those meter leads. There you go. So now we get, we're on battery power. So we're isolated, no risk of shock or damage. And for the circuit, we have a 942 board. And let's see if I can get in there. There we go. So we have uh, between the black and the yellow, that's the signal coming up to the interface. So right now I got it set to 
one millisecond per graticule, okay? There you go. So when we adjust the uh, temperature, you can see that you're gonna see those pulses. Now, what happens if I transfer over here to the red? There we go, okay. So the right, left and right arrows uh, will get you a change in the voltage. So if you disconnect the power, watch what happens. You see the voltage kind of go down over time. You put the power back in and now we have 12 volts. Now how you read this is you have five volts per graticule. So it's one, two, three. So you get about 14 volts on the 12 volt line, which is kind of what we would expect. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and look at the frequency for the microprocessor. Not that you would really wanna do this, except for curiosity, but I wanted to also see if this thing could handle it. Uh, this microprocessor operates at five megahertz. So uh, we're gonna uh, take a look at that right now. Now I'm on the pin, but you can see it's not set correctly. So what you can do on this one is press the auto button now it takes forever, but eventually it gets there. So based on the signal input, it'll automatically do the settings for you. So that's a good uh, estimation of what that waveform looks like. Uh, so it's, it's doing its job. And what you can do is just pause it right there. And then you can take your lead off and you still have the waveform there. You can take a picture for your reference if you want. So, And uh, as far as uses for it, uh, the main troubleshooting I do is for like MCU, CCU, communication. So I don't have to guess at where the, if, if the communication is stopped here or it has a communications here or there. Um, I can see the data coming in and out. Now how it works is, is if you have, uh, you have the interface, all right, it will have communication out to the microprocessor and then the microprocessor will communicate back to. So it's talking back and forth. So that means if I have a separate supply, if I disconnect this guy and I put my leads on there, I'll still get the talking to the interface, I just won't get the talking from the interface. So that's some, one way you can use this to see where the communication is stopping. And I've used this on LGs, on Whirlpools, um, and Samsung's you know, communication is with all of these brands. And uh, so it's, it's helpful to have that. Um, I have on one case, uh, there was a Maytag interface that I didn't know if the interface was talking to the control board. So I took the interface out, I used my DC power supply, powered it up with 12 volts, and I saw the communication coming out so I knew that the interface was okay and so that's uh, just it's a useful tool to have and for a hundred bucks I mean you can't go wrong but you do have to use it you, if it sits in the van it's not gonna be useful for you <laughs> so uh, there you go